Hello physicists, today we are going to be revising projectile motion. Well, let's get started. Let's start with the fact that in projectile motion, the vertical and the horizontal motion of a projectile are completely independent. What does that mean in practice? Let's do a little thought experiment. First off, we're going to drop a ball from a desk with no horizontal velocity, and also we're going to drop a ball from a desk with some horizontal velocity, as indicated by this vector over here. In those two experiments, the vertical and the horizontal component of the velocity are completely independent. This means that, for instance, the vertical component of the velocity, both on the left and on the right, are of exactly the same length. In practice, this means that both objects are going to hit the ground at exactly the same time. The ball will be experiencing a constant acceleration in the vertical plane, and this will be pointing straight down towards the center of the Earth. The horizontal component of the speed will remain unchanged, and that is, of course, if there is no air resistance or other horizontal forces. Now, let's have a go at a few problems regarding projectile motion. First off, let's imagine that we're firing off a projectile at a speed of 10 meters per second at an angle of 35 degrees. Let's find the vertical and the horizontal components of the initial velocity. We're going to start off by resolving the 10 meters per second vector into an adjacent, a horizontal component, and an opposite, a vertical component. The vertical component of the velocity we're going to call uy, and the horizontal component of the velocity we are going to call ux. Now, due to trigonometry, our vertical component will be equal to our hypotenuse, which is 10, multiplied by the sine of the angle, which is 35 degrees, and our horizontal component, ux, will be equal to our hypotenuse, which is 10, times the cosine of the angle, which is 35 degrees. And if we plug those values into a calculator, we're going to get the vertical, the vertical initial velocity to be 5.74 meters per second and the horizontal initial velocity to be 8.2 meters per second. When our projectile is flying, there's only one force which is acting on it, and that is the weight mg, which is acting straight down. In practice, this means that only the vertical component of the velocity is going to change because there are no horizontal forces, once again assuming there is no air resistance present. So, in practice, our vertical component of the velocity will initially be decreasing as the projectile is going up. As soon as it reaches maximum height, it will be zero because the ball will no longer be going up or down, and then it will start to increase again as the ball is starting to fall. On the other hand, our horizontal component of the speed will remain absolutely constant. In a diagram, the situation will look similarly to this. Let's focus first off on the vertical component only. So gravity is acting straight down, the weight is acting straight down, which means that our vertical component is decreasing, reaches zero at the maximum height, and then it increases again until it reaches the same value as before when the ball hits the ground. Our horizontal component, ux, though, will remain exactly the same length throughout this experiment, throughout this projectile motion, once again assuming there are no horizontal forces such as air resistance, for instance. Let's calculate the maximum height of this projectile. In order to do so, we're going to be using the super equations, we're going to apply them in the vertical plane. The most appropriate equation to use to calculate the maximum height of a projectile, there are many different ways, but the one which I'm going to use is the good old equation that v squared, the final velocity squared, will be equal to u squared plus 
FAS. And I'm going to be applying that for the region between here and the maximum height here. We know that the ma at maximum height, the vertical velocity is equal to zero. And this equation will be applied in the vertical plane. So I'm going to leave some subscripts over here to show that this is the final vertical speed. And this over here is the initial vertical speed. Once again, at max height, let's put it right over here, at max height, vy is equal to zero. This means that my equation then becomes zero is equal to uy squared plus 2as, where s will be my maximum height. I can then just rearrange essentially for s, and this will give me minus uy squared is equal to 2as, like so, and s will be equal to minus uy squared divided by 2a. We've already calculated our uy. If we haven't, we can easily, really easily find it by 10 sine of 35. So I'm just going to write down the, um, the expression in this case, just in case you guys are solving a similar problem. So this will be minus 10 sine of 35. And then all of this is square. Well, what happened with the bracket here? All of this is squared, and we're going to be dividing this by twice the acceleration. Because we are going against the weight, our g will be negative, so it'll be negative acceleration, so it'll be minus 9.81. Giving us 1.68 meters of a maximum height. Additionally, let's also calculate the horizontal range of the projectile. This is the horizontal distance between the point at which the projectile is fired off into the sky and the point at which it lands on the ground. In order to calculate the horizontal range, we can use the fact that the horizontal velocity remains perfectly constant. And we've already calculated this as 10 cosine of 35, which is 8.2 meters per second. So what we can do is just use simply the fact that distance is speed times time. So our range is called x, so I can just write down that x is equal to our horizontal speed or horizontal velocity, which is ux, multiplied by the time at which the projectile is in the air. We already know the horizontal speed, but we don't know the time. Let's figure it out. In order to calculate the time t, we could use the fact that the vertical velocity turns zero at maximum height. So we can use the equation that v is equal to u plus a times t, for instance, and um, th this equation is applied for the vertical components only. So I'm going to say that v subscript y, u subscript y, and this is not the time for the full projectile to go from here to here, but it's only for it to reach this point up here. So essentially it's half the time. So I might even give it a little subscript as t half so that I'm absolutely clear that I'm going to need to multiply this time by 2 later on. Okay, well, we know that at max height, once again, so at maximum height, vy is equal to 0. So this means that our equation will then become 0 is equal to uy, which uh, we already have the value of u, which is 10 times sine of 35 degrees plus a t, then t is half the time really. And uh, we can just rearrange for t half. So t half will be equal to minus 10 of sine of 35 divided by a, and our acceleration here is going to be minus 9.81 meters per second because the ball is going upwards until it reaches maximum height. In other words, it is going against the gravitational force, so this will be 
with a negative sign over here. We are going to get 0.58 seconds for the time for the object to reach essentially the maximum height. So if we multiply this by 2, we are going to get, so the time t will be equal to twice that. So let's write twice t half, which will be equal to about 1.17 if um, we're avoiding any rounding errors. And if we just type this directly into our calculator, seconds like so. This will allow us to directly calculate the, the range, so uh, we can do that now. Our range x will be equal to ux, our horizontal speed, which is 10, times the cosine of 35 degrees, multiplied by the, by the time, which is 1.17 seconds. Notice that I'm using the cosine values here rather than just 8.2, simply to avoid any potential rounding errors further on in the answer. And if we put that into a calculator, so let's do that, that'll be 10 times the cos of 35 times 1.17. This is gonna give us a range of 9.6 meters up to two significant figures. Okay, folks, those were some of the main points about projectile motion on the A-level specification. I'm hoping that you have found this video useful. If there are any questions, you know what to do. Please leave a comment and uh, thank you very much for watching.